Hello my wonderful, wonderful friends. This is Roger Spur and I discovered mud fossils. Now not this particular one but I, the research has expanded exponentially. That means exploded because everybody has these. All the rocks that you see basically were from some form of biology. Now that obviously is a human head. Now this obviously is a duck or a goose or something and that is where his neck was and it was laying down like this. Now these things died in a process which caused them to mud fossilize. And what does that mean mud fossilize? Nobody in the past would say a head like this could could turn into stone it was flesh, it would rot away. And that's what I was confronted with for the last 10 years. You are going to be the first group of educated people that understand the process that creates stone from flesh. And it's called nucleophilic substitution. I know it's a big word, it means very little. All it means is the stuff that's in the middle here, which is what we're made out of, we are always in transition. Our bodies are always moving, 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 moving. You, anything inside of you is not stable. Not a thing inside of you is stable. It's giving or taking or other bits and pieces of chemistry to stay alive. That's why you eat, that's why you breathe, that's why you drink, that's why you urinate, that's why you poop. All of these things are moving through you. When you die, or any creature dies, that stops. The movement stops and it has to stabilize. That means, they say, if you can't find somebody to partner up with, like this guy over here, and you, and you, and you, all add together, and you'll be nice and solid like a rock. But if you can't find those guys, you're going to rot. Where's going to find those guys? In the mud in the water, in the, where molecules are moving back and forth through each other. And then he will find the correct ones to link up with. Now this head is from a fellow named Arlie Carvel discovered it, and Jim Burchill and I did some research on it, and it was, um, it was checked out quite thoroughly, and it is an actual human head. And this, I believe, is the way they used to fight was a lot of rocks. <laughs> Slingers, they used to sling stones. If you ever heard Goliath and David and Goliath, he just had whacked them in the head with a stone. Bap, just like that. Now, why are we seeing the black and the red? This is where we're going to come into the chemistry. All of these areas of, they call them transition metals, in here. If you look at a periodic table, which this is, see, periodic table of elements. What does periodic mean? It means they're chunks. One, two, three, four, five, six, balls. All they are, if you, if you can follow me on this, you will be literally a chemist. These are not one big proton, two big protons, three and so forth. They are all made out of one particle, which is electrons, and there is thousands and thousands and thousands of them. There is just nothing but a small ball, a little bigger, a little bigger, 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 and all there is a little ball of molecule, a little ball of electrons. And, and there's 1,840 or so here. 1,840 instead of one. That's the difference. They do not understand how this could happen, so they dismiss this. Because you have to understand electron flood theory. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to get going back to all of these creatures that were petrified in mud, mud fossil. This I had DNA tests. It's a human lung. And any anatomist or any doctor or anybody will know that is. And you see how flat it is back there? That's because there was a great flood at one time. It's all in the texts, all the ancient texts write about great flood. Drowned all of these creatures, and some of them were giants. And I have some giant humans that also were DNA tests. This is the fingertip <laughs> of a giant human creature. It's a giant human being. And it's 100% the same 
DNA as you have right now, mitochondrial DNA, that's a mother side. That's the top of the fingertip. This is where the fingernail was. And it's very easy to see in a CAT scan. And this is the bottom, the pads like you have on the bottom. This is a thumb. And uh, it was a left thumb. It's from right like this. It's just to the back of the thumb, just like that. And you can see the the um, veins and arteries and the tendons and all that stuff in here from the CAT scan. But before we get too deep into the mud fossils and what how they turned into stone and the different creatures that were on the earth that nobody even knew about. This is a new species of human. We call it no toes. The toes are built right into the feet. Some of them were small like this, just about our size. Some of them were gigantic. And this is the tibia, where the tibia comes down, is a big bone. And then there's another bone on the side, same on your foot. And that bone just falls off because it has nowhere to attach to. So we're going to get deep into this, but we're going to start with the chemistry. Because you have to understand, what caused that to be black? What caused that to be red? Why is this brown? What's quartzite? What's sandstone? All right, what's silicon? What's this here? What's going on with this? That's the nose underneath the flesh. The flesh is splayed to the side, pushed off to the side. And this is the cartilage that makes up the nose. This thing got smacked in the head with something, a club or a stone or whatnot. And I believe, it looks to me, after he was killed, somebody came up and just smacked him on the face, with, stepped on his face with their foot and pushed that. Because you're even falling on your face, that's a very unusual injury. That was a BAM! Somebody's boot heel slammed right on there, is my opinion. After it was dead or damn close to dead. <laughs> now, we're going to make some speculations. We're going to guess at some things, yes. But when I talk about chemistry, there'll be very little guessing. Very, very little guessing. Because you have to understand electron flood theory. And now we're going to get into it right now. And then your life will change completely because you will know things that nobody else knows and I'm serious your teachers will not know this you're gonna to have to teach your teachers I'm serious you will have to teach your teachers but do it politely do it respectfully say please could you explain this here's what I was told it could this be true and then go from there all right I love you guys we're gonna get into this deep and we're gonna start with the chemistry Okay, remember I told you I had DNA test on CAT scans. This is that fingertip. Now, this goes back to uh, 2015, oh, five, six years ago. And I'm just going to scan a couple of little spots here to show you. This is from the CAT scan. And I, don't, I know you don't see much there, but this shows where the apical tuft is at the end anatomically. And that, this shows the fingertip itself. That's actually where the fingernail was. Uh, and this is the pads on the bottom and this is where that apical tuft is and this is the back shot coming this way that's tendon on one side that's a tendon on the other you see how I mean it's quite obvious one of them is black and one of them is red you have like two different types of blood in you. You have arterial and you have vein blood. One of them has less oxygen than the other and the red blood has more oxygen and stays red and that's what they make iron out of is red blood. Now this is the from the CAT scans. Now I told you you do not see a whole lot of change in here. You don't see a bone, you don't see all that stuff, but you see what you do see? Boom, 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 boom. These are your blood supplies. That's the blood supplies in the finger. And, you know, it, it, we, I looked at the CAT scans quite carefully. You don't see a whole lot. You know, they scan through them and you can see this and that. But because of what's the nucleophilic substitution, it's not the same stuff you would expect to see. It's now stabilized. And it depends on what chemistry it was in and how it's stabilized. Some of them turn into basalts. Some of them turn into limestone, some of them turn into mudstone, which is this here, this is mudstone. That's a fingertip, that's the blood supplies coming in. That's what an apical, I, I'm sorry, a, um, a fingertip looks like inside the bone. It's called, uh, I 
can't even think of that word now, but that's the apical tuft that sits on the end. I've, I've gone through this extremely well, and then I have this huge hand, it's three feet wide, I have the fingertips and the fingers and knuckles and all kinds of things from it. And, um, and all of this stuff was CAT scanned, DNA tested, so it's not, it, there's no mistakes here. <laughs> the mistake is that the, the people that really should be looking into this don't understand it, so they, they refuse to engage. So you're the ones that are going to have to bring this forward. And, and I know you will, because anyone that really is interested in the truth cannot just walk away and say, okay, you're right, I'll just do, I'll say what you tell me to say. You, you can't do that. You can, I never was able to do that, and you shouldn't be able to do that either if you're an honest person. You don't have to get nasty, but you can just say, look, I, if you don't look at this, well, there's no sense in even discussing it with you. You're, you're, as far as I'm considered, someone that is invested in being a teacher has to be able to be taught themselves. And being taught doesn't mean to just repeat what somebody told you to say. That's not teaching. That's not teaching at all. That's, that's indoctrination. That's literal slavery in my point. If, if you say, you do what I tell you, or I'll ruin your life. And that's exactly what happens in school. They say, you tell, I tell you what to say, and then you say it. If you don't say what I tell you to say exactly the way I tell you to say it, I'm going to give you a poor grade, which will cause you a lot of problems in your life. So you are under my thumb, basically. Now, don't take it as a nasty way. Just understand that that's the way it's always been. We have to change that. Do it respectfully. Just say, please, please engage with this because there, there's so much evidence that supports what this guy is saying that we need to talk about it in a in a open forum discussion. Not sit down, shut up, tell, do what I tell you to do, and you'll get by. That that does not work. That's not good. That's, that's not good at all in my world. Okay, just briefly, I'm going to show you this. This is the DNA test that we're done. I extracted the DNA samples and sent them off to the lab so they didn't extract them they just sampled what I sent them and if somebody wants to retry it fine the stuff is here this was all done PCR this is, was a very very high-end test so this was not some swab off the top I drilled in and took it out of the arterial supplies and they did all this and sent it off to the National Data Bank for all the PCR I mean all the DNA that exists the results of the blast were that it was a homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B gene and D loop region which means it's mitochondrial human DNA and he said 100 percent not like a sort of an, uh, some other species of human, a human, human just like us. So, there you are. Now I'm just going to leave you with this because this is where we're headed next, is what is everything made of? Well, everything there is, is made of only one thing, and that's electrons. However, an electron is not what they always thought it was. An electron has both a positive and a negative. It's called a dipole. Nobody's ever seen the black part, because that black part is dark matter. They talk about dark matter, that's it right there. They always seen the glowy part, but they've never seen the dark part that's attached, because that just pulls things together. We're going to go through this very, very deeply. But two electrons together, back to back, like two little bar magnets, create what's called a photon. And that is neutral. This is very, very energetic because it wants to attach to something. This is already attached to something, so it says I'm okay, I'm neutral. When you build a whole bunch of these electrons together, you start creating these atoms, the periodic table of elements. And all they are is bigger and 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 bigger, and bigger balls. The smallest mass that is stable is a hydrogen. And that consists of almost well, somewhere around 1840 or so electrons. 1840 of those makes one of these. Now, they come periodic means every period. Every 1840 or so, they add another element, they call it. So that's what's called a periodic table. 1840, then the next one comes up to another 1840, 1840, and it adds only there's a lot of neutrons they throw in. So it adds much more than the 1839, 1840 between each one. We're going to get deep into this. 
molecules are nothing more than atoms attached to other little atoms. And they all entangle with their, their electrons. That's all it is. The dark particle that I talked about before is the muon. A muon is dark matter. We're going to get through that. The electron is the glowy part, and when that concusses, it causes showers. And we did all this same research, and here it is right here. There's the wave, which comes ahead of the particle. The particle is way back here. I have one around here somewhere. Here we go. This is the particle. Okay, that's the particle. There's that black one, there's the white one. Back to back makes a photon. And a photon is nothing more than light. It's way back here, and its magnetic field is way out here. So you have a wave and a particle. That's what the, your teacher will say. Well, it's a wave-particle duality. Yes, it is. The particle going forward creates the wave, pushes all these particles out of the way so they glow. Now, because we used a special device, which forced this to accelerate like a rocket ship. You can see it pulled that particle right out of the wave and exploded here into that white concussive material that I talked about. And then there'll be a little, all those little black balls will be surrounding. The white turns into a spray of showers, and they know this, and the black ball just maintains exactly what it looks like there. And here's what it looks like as it comes through the Venturi. The white showers the black balls. The black balls reattach back here, but they are dark matter. They never explode. They don't emit light. They don't absorb light. All they do is attract the white particles, exactly as CERN says. And then when we get into the real deep discussion of it, this is what CERN says. That's the muon, the black ball. There's the electron showers, the white ball. Exactly what they're asking for, we have just showed. And we show them in extreme detail right here. There's the particle. And here's as it concusses, it glows. The forward leading particle that's white, it concusses. This whole thing will wobble and shake and spin in circles and everything because it's being bashed here by other glowy white particles, so it makes it spin. All right, we're going to get deep. I love you guys. Stay with me. And we're going to go through every bit of of education because once you realize that the basis of all the things that you've been told really is it's not supportable you know as I just showed you rocks are, are not just rocks this is not just nothing atoms are not understood we've got a lot of work to do they don't even understand gravity at this point so you guys are the ones that are going to start a whole new realm of understanding and I'll be right there with you until I stop breathing oxygen. <laughs> and I hope that'll be a while, but who knows? Stay tuned. I love you guys. Stay with me.